In a second, uh, what I found uh, the first week is uh, helpful to do some just, you know, quick introduction. So especially for people that haven't worked with each other, you can kind of get get a sense of uh, who the group is, because I very often you guys just dive right into the material, which is great. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a nice little opportunity to get to know each other. Um, and I just have a couple pieces of business uh, to take care of. Um, one, I want to say, so we do have some supporters that kind of help with uh, just the uh, production costs. And so I want to thank uh, Michelle and Christian and Jim and Magdalene and Ivar and Frank uh, for supporting us uh, at, at those levels that, that kind of help us uh, keep this running. Um, and then uh, on another note, I wanted to just mention uh, there were a couple couple people that uh, have uh, have shuffled off their mortar coil and uh, and and. I had a connection to them. And so um, one of them is Jeffrey Carlson. Uh, he was an actor based, uh, did a lot of work in uh, New York and Chicago, taught Shakespeare a lot in sh uh, Chicago. And that's how I knew him. And um, uh, he recently uh, recently left this plane. And then uh, there was another actor, uh, kind of more of a, an amateur actor, but uh, his name is Danny Fulkerson. And he did one of these workshops with us early on. And uh, he was somebody that, you know, even in his seventies, uh, still loved kind of trying these things out and doing different things. And he had a whole career as you know doing other work, but just you know, um, love to uh, love to act and, and do Shakespeare. So um, I'll miss both of them. They were they were great uh, great people in, in their own ways. And uh, I don't know if, if if anyone here had worked with Jeffrey or or knew him. Um, I feel like I know that name. That sounds very yeah. familiar. I feel like I've if I've not worked with him, I've met him through people I've worked. Yeah. With. I mean, he did. He did a lot of work at I think uh, Shakespeare DC and 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 Chicago Shakes and 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 in New York as well, and and had oh, you know had done some TV work. So what's up, Paul? So that's where I trained. Was at the Shakespeare Theater in DC. So I'm pretty oh, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he was he was a very uh, very bright light and just had a kind of an innate gift with with Shakespeare. So uh, I was sad to see him go. He was only uh, you know I think he was only in his forties. But, uh, you know, so, uh, but yeah, so wanted to acknowledge both of them. Um, and uh, actually I, I saw during the pandemic, uh, the Goodman released a streaming version of their Measure for Measure uh, that Bob Falls had directed. And um, uh, Jamie Newcomb, who I kind of connected through with this, he played the Duke and he's a fantastic actor. If you've never seen or, or worked with him, uh, he's just really, really wonderful. And they had this very seedy concept of like 1970s New York. That was their version. And I, and I, won't, I won't give anything away in case you ever have the, have the chance to stream it. But the ending that they chose for the play, which is a little ambiguous, um, had people... Uh, just so divided about how either they loved it or just hated it. Um, and, but they made a choice and they got people talking, which is, you know, to some degree, what, what our good art does. Um, but, uh, but Jeffrey was actually in that production. He played Lucio and uh, he was just brilliant um, in that. So, uh, so that brings us back to Measure for Measure and uh, really excited. I've, I've done some scenes from it. I've uh, seen it. So I'm, I'm excited to, you know, just, See what you guys mind from it and um, thrilled that you all uh, were available and, and were able to jump on this. I'm, I'm always so grateful and so honored uh, by all of you just wanting to do this, uh, you know, have fun in this sandbox, so to speak, for, for a month. And um, it really means a lot. And I, I think the, the work kind of speaks for itself, but uh, it's just, especially all of us being so far flung uh, around the country varying levels of, of creative projects in, in our lives. I, this is such a, a welcome spot in my own life, just even being able to observe and, and listen. So uh, I'm, I'm so grateful. And uh, I think it's been a really great uh, success in terms of being able to connect people and get people to work on material in a way that they don't often get the chance to do at, uh, on the, in this deep way. So um, I'll, uh, I'll stop yammering because I could keep, just keep going on and on about how wonderful I think all of this is and not because I'm producing it, but because of all the work that, and talent that you guys bring to it. So, uh, so thank you. And um, yeah, I'll, and, and for those who don't know me, I'll, I'll just very, very briefly say a little intro on me and then we'll kind of pass it around. But um, yeah, I, uh, I studied at USC, uh, did a lot of theater in LA, 
um, did a little bit of TV and film out there. And then um, kind of in a similar uh, way to, to Rachel, I got rid of everything and then just started traveling and, and backpacking. And uh, to this point, I've been to all 50 states and about 20, 22 countries or something like that. Um, actually, where I'm heading is, is we're going to Africa uh, on Saturday. We're going for a couple of weeks. So that'll be our sixth continent, my wife and I together our sixth continent. Um, and, uh, but then uh, five or six years ago, I, I got into audiobooks, And so I've been doing that. Uh, and we live in very, very Northern California, not the Bay Area, actual Northern California, uh, near Oregon, uh, about 30, 35 minutes from Oregon Shakespeare Festival in Ashland. Um, and so uh, I'm in a very small town, uh, which is quiet. I get to record audiobooks, uh, which is great. Uh, and then do this. So that's uh, that's a quick glimpse into what I'm up to. And then I'll uh, maybe I'll pass it over to Stefan. Uh, hi, everybody. This is the craziness of saying yes to Nathan when he says, hey, I haven't talked to you in 15 years. You want to direct people and have people I'll record it and people can watch it. Sure. Why not? Um, and then I forgot. Got and then he he emailed me back and said, "Hey, remember when you said you did this?" I'm like, "Oh crap, yeah, we'll make it work." Uh, I was in LA. I went to UC San Diego to get my MFA in directing. Met my wife there, who was a set designer. We moved to LA. Uh, I was in LA. I think in the golden years, it seems like for 99C Theater, and I was able to work with some of the great companies and do incredibly huge, stupid theater and far more adventurous than I could do if I was in New York. And then 2008 happened and uh, the economy tanked and I looked for a tenure track job and I got it. And I feel really lucky. My wife's tenure track up at University of North Texas teach set design. I teach at a small liberal arts Catholic school, but I teach uh, theater literature and directing now. And I tour, tour, I direct, a Lord show probably every two years, maybe. There's just no time anymore with kids and everything. So this is a welcome. I'm really grateful to get to hang out with some pros. And um, I rereading it. I've directed this play once. Uh, just rereading it, you forget how great Shakespeare is. So thank you, Nathan. This is, we're gonna have fun. Uh, I don't know, Charlotte. Hello. Um... My name is Charlotte Northeast, and yes, that's my real name. I didn't make it up. Um, I'm Canadian originally, uh, but I, I went to school at uh, Circle in the Square in New York um, and then settled uh, just outside of Philadelphia many, many years ago. Um, and I've been part of the Philadelphia theater scene for 20 plus years and uh, helped found a company that specializes in rarely produced classics. Um, I've done Measure for Measure once here in Philadelphia. Uh, I played 7,000 characters, including Mistress Overdone, the provost, um, one of the bailiffs. I don't know. I, 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 had, I, I remember the costume changes more than the stage time. <laughs> it was sort of insane. Um, uh, and the reason, uh, so Paul and I know each other, we just did for this company that I helped found, the Philadelphia Artist Collective, we just did a brand new adaptation of Jane Eyre. Um, and so that's how we know each other. Um, a brand new adaptation, which she helped to adapt. I did, I did, I did, I did, I forget that part. Um, yeah, so I'm part of a, a writing consortium and we write, uh, we've written, this is our second piece we've done. So Jane Eyre and we've done uh, the complete works of Jane Austen, Abridged, which is, exactly what you think it is. It's a three, three-hander of uh, doing the complete works of Jane Austen abridged. And it's really, really ridiculous and fun. And people dress up to come see it because that's how nutty they are for Jane Austen. Um, and uh, this is my third project with Nathan. So thank you, Nathan. I haven't worn out my welcome quite yet. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to work on it. I, I, I love this play. It's so thorny and so gooey. Um, so I'm looking forward to figuring out some of the, the gooier parts. Anyway, um, uh, Rachel, I will popcorn it to you. Perfect. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Dillaplain. I went to school in Washington College, where one of my professors was Brendan Fox, who introduced me. 
virtually to I love Brendan. Oh, good. Okay, good. I figured there'd be some good Brendan heads in here. <laughs> Uh, and I've actually never seen a full production of Measure for Measure or been in one, though my senior year, I created an independent study with Brendan so that I could know how to audition in the real world and such. And uh, Isabella's uh, To Whom Should I Complain was one of my monologues for all of that. And then actually, after I graduated, Brendan brought me back to Washington College for a stage adaptation of Jasper Ford's novel, The Air Affair. So this is all feeling very kismet, which is very exciting. But um, yeah, I've worked on both sides of the stage as admin and uh, performing. Uh, and then, of course, 2020 hit and theater took whatever hiatus it needed to. And in that time, I transitioned into professional voiceover. And I'm coming to you live now from my voiceover booth in my self-converted 2003 Ford E350 shuttle bus. And I dare you to say that six times fast. So that's me. And I think I'll popcorn it over to Paul then. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, J. Paul Nicholas is the professional name, but I just go by Paul. Uh, I started out as a rabbi in prisons, and then I got a job as the starting point guard for the Miami Heat and um, found that dealing heroin in Miami was a much more lucrative profession. And so I shifted over to that and then discovered acting. And here I am. Um, Charlotte was one of my heroin clients. That's how we know each other. Hmm. Um, one of the best clients I ever had, as a matter of fact. Um, no, um, I'm not good at talking about myself. I'm from Miami. Uh, I had a corporate life. I've always been an actor since I was 10 years old. Both my parents are actors. One were, one was, the other one is. Um, and uh, I worked a lot in Philly and decided to move to Philly in 2009. No, I started working in Philly in 2009. I bought a house in 2016. So I moved to Philly in 2016 officially. And um, yeah, I've been bouncing around. I act, I direct, I do fight choreography whenever I can and I teach. I'm going to start teaching in two weeks. I start teaching college at Villanova. Wow. Kind of frightening, but there we are. What are you going to teach? Uh, macrame and uh, cocktail making. There'll, there'll be a lot of cocktail making, I'm sure. Yeah. These are 21 year olds. So, yeah. No. Yeah. The intro to acting or fundamentals of acting or one of those things. basic acting. How awesome. What they said to me was, we've seen your work and it's pretty basic. So we want you to teach basic. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. You're doing stand up on the weekends, right? What? Paul, is it, are you touring the yeah. country? I, I do a lot of sit down comedy. Um, but don't. I, I'm sorry, Nathan. I'm sorry. I regret my choices. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I never, love this. Never done measure. Maybe you should be. He, he, Paul should be playing Lucio. We'll just have Rachel play Angelo. Dude, I want to play Pompey so bad. I, I used a Pompey <sighs> monologue chopped up from that from Act 1, Scene 2. I chopped up. I made a monologue out of that. And I used that as an audition piece for a long time. Very cool. It's a um, genius role. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I've seen it, Shakespeare in the Park, with Joe Morton playing the Duke. And I mm. forget the other actors. That was, that was many, 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 many years ago. But I've never done the play. But I do like it a lot. Well, cool. Well, I'm, um, I'm very uh, um, I'm thrilled that you, you got out of the heroin game, Paul. That's uh, admirable, um, as, as lucrative as it, as it was. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited, uh, you, you know, just hearing everybody's, you know, backstory, some of which I knew to some degree. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm a kid in the candy store with these things. I, I just love it. I can't wait. Uh, is, you guys are going to have such fun conversations and, and discussions and all that. So um, that's, I think that's it for me. If you need anything, uh, I'll be listening in, but uh, you know, you guys know what to do. It's why you're here. Uh, you've all been to rehearsals. So off you go. And uh, I'll probably check in before you leave. Yes, Paul. I do have a question. Is anyone listening tonight? Um, so there's no live component uh, for the first uh, three weeks. 
um, it'll just be a, a kind of cut, you know, or a replay of it. So yeah. Okay, good. So it's just it's just us in the room for the first three weeks, or you know, you guys in the room. But then you, people can watch this. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This, this is great. I said to my wife, uh, I'm trying to describe. Will you, Nathan? Will you just what is you you? I went on the website and tried to understand all of it, but so young professionals can watch this and just sort of watch what it's like to be in the room. Is that sort of the, one of the goals? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, uh, I'll try to keep this concise, but even at the time I recognized when I was uh, in LA, specifically at Antius, um, taking classes and doing shows, I was extraordinarily lucky to be surrounded by so many professionals who had 30, right. 40, 50, 60 years of work experience and who had done regional theater for 20 or 30 years. And that's how they learned their craft. And, and of course, acting as a craft, that's how it used to be passed down is, you, you know, the young pros would be on tour with the companies and they'd watch from the wings and, and learn and all that. And so to some degree, um, that's how I felt like I learned and, and gained a little bit of confidence, uh, even as a young professional. And, you know, when I started this project in 2017, it was it was a podcast to try to capture some of what I learned from these people and just to hear their stories and share that with a wider audience. And then over the pandemic, it just became a conversation of what do you you know, I knew I know all these people, all these great actors and artists and directors. And what do you want to do with this time? Because I think we're going to be here for a little bit. Um, and this came out of that. You know, it's like, well, mm. what if we spent you know, uh, a long amount of time on a short amount, of, on a small amount of material that, you, you know, we, you, you know, a material that has so much to offer that we never get the chance to do in a rehearsal. Uh, and right. so, so yes, it's, th there's a number of goals with it, but um, in a long winded way to, yes, I agree that one of my hopes is that this allows not only younger professionals who are involved in the scene to kind of see, well, what are the, you know, what are the pros? What do the older pros do? How do they, you know, deal with questions about character and what are they asking and what are they still insecure about or don't know or how do that, what's their process so that they can see firsthand, whether it's the director, the actors or, or whomever, how they investigate material so that the, even the, the younger and newer actors or artists involved in the scene can see that. But then anyone watching, whether they're whatever age they are, can see this is, this is the job. Like this is really what the job is. And this is under ideal circumstances. <laughs> you know, you might get cast and the director never even says hi to you. So what's your job and what, what, what do you do if, you know, you don't have the time or the attention of, of the other, you know, people. Um, and, and I hope that this, this can kind of reveal that process. And, and it, and it also shows that there are many ways uh, for every artist involved, there are many ways into the text mm. to investigate it. And, you know, I mean, we could, we could, every month we could be working on the same scene and a different group would find new things. You know, that's, that's the beauty of everyone having their own process and this material being so rich. And it's not only Shakespeare, we've done Chekhov and we just last month, uh, uh, Charlotte worked on uh, a Virginia Woolf adaptation. So there's, there's a lot to um, explore and there's a lot of ways to do it. So I'm sorry, I'm a very verbal person if you haven't noticed. And uh, You're great, if man. you get me. If you get me talking about something I'm, I'm passionate about, uh, good luck getting in a word edgewise. So <laughs> I'll pause there. No, that was great. That was great. Does anyone have any other questions for Nathan? And then we'll let him disappear into the ether. And now I we start having rehearsal. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do it, yeah. Amazing. Good yeah. You'll know Thank you, do. Nathan. All right. See you guys in a bit. Thank you, guys. I, you know, I was the only thing I wish I, I kind of wanted to hear about what the front lines were like in terms of the sack after crap going on out there. Um, all my friends in L.A., what they're posting is just let's go protest. Who's protesting where? What a I get um, crazy I get emails time. from SAG trying to encourage members to come out to pick it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm two hours away, so. Well, Philly yeah. had Philly had a rally 
I want to say a week ago around Love Park. Really? Was, yeah, yeah. And it was quite well attended. I, I saw pictures. I wasn't there, but a friend of mine posted a bunch of pictures and it was quite boisterous. So Wow. Uh, what I what wow. I don't like is the way the news is framed. Like New York Times says Hollywood actors striking. I'm like, it's it, it's not Hollywood. It's anybody in this union across the it just makes me nuts. Anyway. I don't know how. I mean, I, I'm always amazed just at actors in general, but but what's going on now? It seems good, like I hope it's a watershed event. I hope it's a a big shift. Something happens, but I don't know. It's just not a world I, I know anymore. Um, okay, my loves, this is super weird uh, to just jump into a, a scene. And I'm so glad people aren't watching because I thought, oh God, I, I'm people, I have to be teaching already, um, which is not really, or, or, or being an exemplar already. And I will tell you, I have zero preconceived notions about this scene because I did not know you. And you don't know me. And sometimes I learn things from auditions about, you know, what a scene is going to be. And then I had a friend just post one of those super annoying and yet super inspirational Peter Brook quotes. And to which he said, like, like, you know, his, he has this whole thing about concepts that never put a, like a concept is the last thing you figure out on a play, not the first thing. You know, uh, because if you, if you bring a concept to the play, you limit the play. Uh, that's what happens at the very, 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 very end. And it's this great paragraph. And it was what I needed today. So uh, against my better judgment, I have I, I think we should just read it and find out who we are and find out what our version of this scene is. I have a I'm, very inane question. Yeah. It might be where, my same question. Yeah, where does it? I I know we got like a thing in Nathan's email, but I'm not sure where it starts. <laughs> Aren't we starting uh, at the top of scene two? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Sorry, inane. Yeah, I I see my. I was actually the hardest part of getting this email from Nathan is okay. Now he's like, well, what do you want to do? And here's the criteria: it can't just be two people. It's got to be of a certain length. And by the way, we've done all the famous ones already. And I'm like. So I was really proud of what I found. This is the perfect amount of meat for everybody, you know. Uh, but yeah, we're just doing two, two, all of it, you know. It's like you got to pick this. I, I, in my brain, wondered if, like, I was dropping into, oh, they've been working their way through the play, and this month they're doing this scene. You got to pick this specifically, and we get to work on it. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I was traveling. I teach um, in, in, in uh, my university has a campus south of Rome. So I was in Rome, uh, you know, uh, in one in Rome. And I mean, but I was like, I don't have time to. And then I forgot. And Nathan's like, hey, I need a scene. So I felt terrible. Um, I'll put my cards on the table. I'm not a Shakespearean. Uh, the, the, the term all my facts faculty friends use i'm i'm not trained as a shakespeare director uh but i've done a lot of it, it turns out it turns out i'm pretty good at it because i'm just good at words but i would love a debate at some point and maybe it's just a beer at some point when we're all in the same room of just your what your visions of it are on you know paul you're tr trained at shakespeare like there, there's just all these debates on how to do shakespeare um, that I'm I'm curious about, and and maybe Philippa will um, will help us a little bit. You know, she's a resident at all these places, I, but I'm not. I don't get bogged down in theory. Okay, good. So we're not going to be doing it like Peter Brook. No. No. Um. So I don't know. Any other questions before we read it? I'll read the servant. That was my next question. Yeah, you can't do it. You, you. There is a. There's a couple times where uh, Provost and Lucio talk to each other. Yeah. And um, which we, I think we're gonna have to have fun with. Yeah. Uh, I think he was being nice and didn't want one person to do the provost, but they're two kind of fun roles. Like the provost, you can have a lot of fun with the provost, but okay. For now, uh, you just read both, and I'll read the sermon. Should we read it once? Any other questions before we dive in? All right, let's go. Act two, scene two, enter provost and a servant. 
He's hearing a cause. He will come straight. I'll tell him of you. Pray you do. I'll know his pleasure. Maybe he will relent. Alas, he hath but as offended in a dream. All sex, all ages, smack of this vice, and he to die for it? Now what is the matter, provost? Is it your will, Claudio, shall die tomorrow? Did I not tell thee yea? Did I not tell thee yea? Hadst thou not order? Why dost thou ask again? Lest I might be too rash. Under your good correction, I have seen when, after execution, judgment hath repented or his doom. Go to, let that be mine. Do you your office or give up your place, and you shall well be spared. I crave your honor's pardon. What shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet? She's very near her hour. Dispose of her to some more fitter place, and that with speed. Here is the sister of the man condemned desires access to you. Hath he a sister? I, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, if not already. Well, let her be admitted. See you the fornicatress be removed. Let her have needful but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Save your honor. Say a little while. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to your honor. Please, but your honor, hear me. Sorry, I'm losing place in the script. Uh, well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor and most desire should meet the blow of justice for which I would not plead, but that I must. For which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Heaven give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it? Why, every fault's condemned, ere it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Just but severe law. That I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Give not or so to him again, entreat him, kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I, I, I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look what I will, look what I will not, uh, look what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as, as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Too late? Why, no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well, believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, no, not the king's crown, not the deputed sword, the, the, the marshal's truncheon, nor the judge's robe become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If he had been as you and you as he, you would have slipped like him, but he, like you, would not have been so stern. Pray you be gone. I would to heaven. I had your potency and you, Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. Oh, I would tell what twere to be a judge and, and what a prisoner. I touch him. There's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. Alas, why all the souls that were forfeit once, and he that might the vantage best have took, found out the remedy. How would you be if he, which is the top of judgment, should, oh, where'd it go? Oh, this script. Do, 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 do. Ah, there it is. Should but judge you as you are. Oh, think on that. And mercy then will breathe within your lips like man, new made. Be you content, fair maid. It is the law 
not I condemn your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Oh, oh that, that's sudden. Spare him. Spare him. He, he's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens, we, we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good, good, my lord, be, bethink you. Who is it that hath died for this offense? There's many that have committed it. Aye, well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared to do that evil if the first that did the edict infringe had answered for his deed. Now tis awake takes note of what is done, and like a prophet, looks in a glass that shows what future evils, either now or by remissness new conceived and so in progress to be hatched and born, are now to have no successive degrees, but ere they live, to end. So some pity. I show it most of all when I show justice, for then I pity those I do not know, which a dismissed offense would after gall and do him right that answering one foul wrong lives not to act another. Be satisfied. Your brother dies tomorrow, be content. <laughs> so you must be the first that gives this sentence and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant's strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. That's well said. Good great men thunder as Jove himself does. Jove would never be quiet, for every pelting, petty officer would use his heaven for thunder. Nothing but thunder. Merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulfurous bolt splits the unwedgeable and gnarled oak that with the, that the soft myrtle, than the soft myrtle. But man... Proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured. His glassy essence, like an angry ape, plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as makes the angels weep. Who with our spleens would all themselves laugh mortal. Oh, to him, to him, wench. He will relent. He's coming, I perceived. Oh, pray heaven she win him. We cannot weigh our brother with ourself. Great men may jest with saints. Tis wit in them, but in the less foul profanation. Uh, thou art in the right, girl. Move more on that. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Art of eyes that that more on Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err, like others, hath yet a kind of medicine in itself that skins the vice over the top. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and tis such sense that my sense breathes, breathes with it. Fare you well. Gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Hark how I'll bribe you. Good, my lord, turn back. How? Bribe me? Aye, with such gifts that heaven shall share with you. You had marred all else. Not with fond stickles of the tested gold or stones whose rate are either rich or poor as fancy values them, but with true prayers that shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise, prayers from preserved souls, from fasting maids whose minds are dedicated to nothing temporal. Well, come to me tomorrow. So too, tis well, away. Heaven, keep your honor safe. Amen. 
for I am that way going to temptation where prayer is cross. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? Uh, any, at any time for noon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. Oh, what's this? What's this? Is this her fault or mine, the tempter or the tempted? Who sins most? Ah. Oh. Not she, nor doth she tempt. But it is I that, lying by the violet in the sun, do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's likeness? Having waste ground enough, shall we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Oh, fine, fine, fine. What dost thou? Or what art thou, Angelo? Thieves for their robbery have more authority when judges steal themselves. What, do I love her that I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What's what is I dream on? Oh, cunning enemy that to, that to catch a saint with saints doth bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could the strumpet with all her double vigor, art and nature, once stir my temper, but that virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were fond, I smiled and wondered how. Oh, poor Angelo. He met a girl. He's a very sympathetic character. It's, it's a tragedy for Angelo, I think. It is. It's a strange play. I, I, we're going to have fun. That was awesome. Sorry, I, I just launched into what do we do with the ending, um, which I have never solved. But uh, you mean the ending of this scene or the ending of the play? Of the play. Oh, yeah. Lots of people have problems with the ending of the play. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you how I did. I cheated. See, I, I the school I, I, I teach at is a, it's a very conservative school, uh, but it's a great book school. So they're very well educated. It's it's more great books than conservative think, think hyper intellectual catholics rather than conservative spiritual catholics but there's nuns everywhere there's nuns and monks everywhere and and like you know phd musicologist nuns like really cool nuns and, and everything and so every night when we performed it there was a nun there were three nuns from uganda there one night and so rather than it being a kind of like Oh, Isabella would never choose to be a nun because who would ever choose to be a cloistered nun? On my campus, it's a legitimate choice of a life, right? And so I, we, I gave it up to the, 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 the actress she owes every night. Sometimes she knew she, the actress got to choose whether or not she went to him or not every mm -hmm. night. That's Total cop out. Total cop out, but interesting because it made the guy they made the guy playing the Duke work really hard to get the girl and try to become far more charming uh, than maybe as written. But clearly Shakespeare thought it was weird, too. My cop out, I've, I've decided if I ever direct it, my cop out would be worse. My cop out is I would figure out a way to just cut the lines where he says you should marry me. I had uh, there was a. You guys all done. Do you guys have like drunk Shakespeare, Shakespeare in the bar in Philly? I assume. We don't have it, but I've, I've seen it. Yeah. It's awesome. You should go once. It's good. It's good. Like three times and then it gets kind of annoying, but it's basically the premise is uh, barely, barely rehearsed Shakespeare done in front of a bar audience, but everyone's off book. And if, anyone calls for line, everyone drinks. It's, it's electric and they run it. There's uh, like these, it, it flies by and it's full of wonderful, silly conceits. And you just, it's like really quick and you get three rehearsals. And the way they did it is they just cut her false. You know, there's these two moments at the end where she, do I go to him or not? 
and he's like, what's mine is yours, yours is mine. And she doesn't respond. He's like, okay, awkward, I'll move on. And then later he's like, what's my, and then she goes to him. They just cut the second one and made it a comedy. And it actually worked too. Where it was like, all is forgiven. It's all okay. That worked too. But that's not our topic today. Tonight, it's this scene, this delightful, meaty scene. Uh, first of all, questions or comments that you might have about who you're playing, what the hell's going on in the play. Maybe you don't know the play that well. That wasn't part of the assignment. So anything? Honestly, which it, this is kind of my like uh, theater training speaking here is always the question of why am I here and I for how wonderful everybody's arguments are in this scene every like I just feel and especially just now reading through it where I was like oh that's right it's me that's that's my line is realizing how much I feel like I interrupt the actual arguments being made so uh, my constant question training wise and particularly tonight is like why am I here? There's a moment in the end of the play, right, where Lucio pulls the Duke's disguise off. Mm -hmm. And the Duke's like, you little shithead. Like, mm. mm -hmm. uh, Lucio is light. Lucio goes anywhere Lucio wants, does whatever he wants, she wants. Does whatever uh, he wants. And, and there's this, and everyone knows it. And there's a freedom to what, what Lucio does that you need, you can explore. And just somehow it's okay that Lucio's in the room, right? So Lu Lucio's not a servant servant, right? He's not like the messenger, but Lucio clearly doesn't mind telling truth to power. Lucio, Lucio has no status. He just does whatever they want. Um, Lucio wants her brother to get off, right? So his, why are you there from the most basic question of like, why am I there? It's to coach her, to make her, make sure she does it correctly. Because she's never gone before a judge and argued and like begged and you have all the time. Great. And so to that end, the asides to Isabella are audible for Isabella versus like in the corner being like, oh, come on, if I could just tell her these couple if, things. If I'm not, I think you might have one. I can't remember. You might have one that's like to yourself, like, oh, what was that? But mm. one thing I've learned from Shakespeare in the Bar, and if you've ever seen a show at the Globe, um, the size of the audience, it's all connected. You, you're allowed to just break the fourth wall and just muck, play it up. Um, but no, a lot of your job is to is to get um, Isabella to like do something like like to goose her to like because she comes in like one way like it, the the beauty of this scene from an acting challenge is that you both get great arcs right the Duke and Isabella get these great fun things and so you got to figure out how you enter and then how you exit there's your training uh, but Isabella is a diff perfect person at the beginning and lucio's like come on like I, I i wonder what lucio a good question you might ask yourself is well what was what did lucio think she'd do right well i and then, I'm asking too it's like well if lucio could have made this argument by himself he would have or they would have man no yeah and 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 i can't wait to unpack the argument and find out how much of it is true how much is kind of bullshit right how much is circular like what when does angelo fall what makes angelo like what what how does she actually get him would be my job as the director to tell to make sure we all are aware that's where the event is right and does um, she mean to or does she want to or is it because she's being coached or yeah oh i love the scene this is great yeah yeah and when does when does Isabella step out of her comfort zone? Right? When when does she go too far? There's yeah. a scene 
Yeah, go ahead. No, go well, ahead. that's something, you know, there's, there's, there's several moments where Lucio's, you're too cold, you're too cold. And like, I'm a very fiery person. So I'm like, how much is that just Lucio's spin on it? Or is she, is she the ice queen? And so I'm trying to figure out like, is she is how, how facile is she? Cause she gives up real quick in the beginning. Oh, that sucks. I gotta go. Like, you know? And so, <laughs> and then it just, the, the engine starts. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm still, the topography of this is so complicated. That, it is so complicated. Yeah. I'm, I'm still just figuring out the navigation of that. And yeah, what, what is useful from what Lucio gives her as opposed to like <laughs> buzzing in the air, but you know, you remember her first scene? I don't know if you know, you know, mm-hmm. okay. Have you seen the play? You yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So she's got that scene where her, where she's talking to the, um, the, the, the head of the order and she's like, wait, yeah, she appeals to the, the mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and her appeal is, wait, is this, aren't there more strict rules? Shouldn't, mm-hmm. Aren't there, is this all the rules? Should there be more? Mm-hmm. And the governess is like, Hmm. And, and I will tell you, there are, I have a, I have a lot of friends who are priests and monks and uh, nuns. And I have a lot of students who have tried to become nuns who get rejected. Hmm. A lot of them. Because they're just like her at the beginning. They're just zealots. They're, they they might as well be, well, they, they, Catholic has nothing to do with it. They're, 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 18 to 22 year old vegan zealots. They're whoever you know who's like unbending, like I want rules to right. And there's not an order in the in the world that would take them. They're really careful. And mm-hmm. so she starts out that way, right? In the play. Right. And so here, I think it's almost this might be the next scene. It is. Yeah. And so it's it's that it's no, she has a scene with Lucio after the nun. She has a scene with Lucio, yeah. But right, so, like, but it's it's all like filaments out of the air, like d- you know, discovering these moralities. I guess good, through, yeah, totally. Yeah, but I think when she comes in, you know, rules is a rule. All right, I'll go appeal. Will you spare my brother? No. All right. Um, when- and that's why Lucio has to be like, get up there, Angela. Yes, sir. <laughs> When Lucio says you are too cold, does he mean you are too conservative about following rules or does he mean you're too timid? Well, or something well, else? Luc- Lu- Lucio? Well, being- actually, that's interesting too, because one of those you are too colds comes immediately after Angelo has spoken versus Isabella. I think it still says, aside to Isabella, but the double meanings in so many mm-hmm. of these lines of like, save your honor, save your oh. honor, um, yeah. and you are too cold and you are too cold. Um, it's something that's fun to play around with. Um, I, my first impression is that Lucio is like, touch him more. We're like in a conversation about Um, my best friend who's in trouble for impregnating somebody he loves and actually wants to marry. And we're in this town where everybody does it. And the Duke even knows everybody does it. And that's why he put you in charge. So he doesn't have to punish anybody. So I think most of the you are too cold is like, hey, loosen up, touch him, like make sure he like gets in a more flexible, fluider mood. I think it means it's, 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 it is, there's a sex in there. Mm-hmm. You are too cold in, in all those ways. It's like, come on, get in the deep end. Let's go. And he has a line, Lucio has a line in the scene with um, Isabella where he says um, something about uh, that it's, it, it's much more powerful when women maidens 
When maidens sue men, sue. when maidens sue, men give like gods, but when they weep and kneel, all their petitions are as freely theirs as they themselves would owe them. So he believes that a woman can get a man to, to agree to just about anything if they are if they use their their wiles enough. Awesome. Right, because so much of this play is about getting stuff outside of the law, right? They're all it's all a bunch of big bartering kind of thing. And it's the way the world has worked. So yeah, I think Lucio is like get in there, get human. Yeah. She's nervous. Which though the other interesting side of that is having her being on the cusp, uh, Isabella being on the cusp of being uh, of the sisterhood, and um, that being almost a kinky like, hey, get it now because. If, if we'd been a couple hours later, this wouldn't have even been a bargaining chip. I, uh, yeah, no question. Um, can't wait to get a dramaturg here to talk about Catholics and, and Elizabethan society. Uh, but I won't go there right now. Paul, how are you feeling? Uh, Any well, big I'm, questions? Oh, oh yeah. I, I mean, I've, studied this play and have always been so um, a little intimidated and fascinated by the complexity of this character, Angelo. Um, and one of the approaches I decided to take, which I think maybe it's just me being lazy or maybe it helps me to figure him out, is just to look at him more simply. And I want the three of you to tell me if that makes sense. Like you asked, when does he start to turn? And um, I noticed the first time he says anything to himself slash the audience is when he says that her argument makes sense to me. Um, and I don't know if that means that he's already being attracted to her or if he's being literal and saying what she is saying does make sense. Mm. Mm. And then the next time he takes an aside is after she says, she's going to bribe him. And he's like, what? Bribe me? Are you insane? Um, and then when she explains what she means by bribery, then he starts to say, wow, I am going that way to temptation. So I'm wondering if it's really that simple or does he start to turn earlier or if it's something else? You, you people that are smarter than I am can help me figure that out. I think we'll have, we're definitely going to have to find it and we're going to have to find that place and we have to, we're going to have to agree on it. Uh, it's going to be a, it's somewhere where Isabella finds a new uh, gear, a new color, a new, right? That goes to this new place because he, did, he could have started the scene, Mr. Shakespeare, with uh, Angelo being, oh, hello, you know, yeah, but he, he does it. And he, and he, and he, and it's, it's a while. So I would delay it as, not as long as possible, but we definitely can go, well, what, what works on him? And, it, and it's really, it's, it's sexy, hot reason. It's, it's, is what it is. It's reason. It's passionate reason, which is just so much cooler than the world of the rest of measure for measure, which really is just straight up erotic. Everyone's getting, you know, I, I had one bad version of this in grad school that I thought up, which is, of course, to do it in Mardi Gras because but you've got to do it. You know, you got to do it somewhere where everybody's in, you know, it's got carnival written all over it. Um, it also has Handmaid's Tale written all over it. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, one of the things that complicates him even further for me because I would love to just simplify him and say, oh, he's this stickler and he's a Puritan and he's never had this, these thoughts. But we find out later on that he had a woman in the past that he left at the altar. Yeah. And, and she was pregnant, wasn't she? If I remember right. I can't, that I can't remember. Is that Ma Marianne, right? Marianne. Yep. Yeah, I don't think, was... yeah, I don't think she's pregnant, but she was definitely betrothed to him. Yes. Yeah. They were set to be married and he and he bounced. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you know, 
so that complicates it even further. And maybe that's not, maybe I should not think, I should not weigh that too heavily. And maybe well, I should like, listen to him when he says like ex-smokers, ex-smokers are the worst. You know, because <laughs> they're um, so, they're so like, ah, and you're like, you need to settle down. Like, there's just like a, I mean, that's the worst version of that, but like, do you know what I mean? The people who have, have rejected a major part of themselves, they are that, um, but, one way but, or with it. They can be gracious about it or they can be so anti-anti, you know? But was that a major part of himself or did he just get with a woman and decide, I'm, this is not for me, I'm too scared. This is not the right one, I'm out of here. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know. I don't know the genesis of why he made that decision. Like, well, well, she wasn't, she wasn't very affluent. I'd have to look at the Marianne. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's definitely one of those. She's not very affluent, but he, I think he liked her. I, I'm going to say, uh, Paul, that these are things we're going to discover. I think he is, I think one of the secrets to the play, to doing the play is you create this desire inside you and you hide it. Right. As an actor, you mean? Not yeah. Angelo does. Yeah, yeah. For, I think each character probably has something, except for maybe Lucio, who's just out there. But you, right. you got to find that thing that you've decided you to put away, and that and that might be the thing that knocks the lid off the pot. Is that thing, and it will also sort of give you guys two things to play simultaneously, right? Uh, that that. There might be a clue, but I think we're just going to walk through it and find it. The conjecture about why he left her at the altar, I'm going to leave that up to you, or we'll, we'll talk about it even more later, but that's all the, it's all in there, and we'll find who he is, is another way to put it. Uh, I, let me ask, uh, not, not to change its topic, but the provost is a neglected, but very important character that actually reveals a lot about Angela, Right? Because look at how the what the provost says about Angela, mm -hmm. right? Well, you know there are times you'll you'll all you know you're a little you're a little um, hard to handle sometimes. I never know what you're thinking, right? And and I, I and the provost is interestingly on the side of everyone else. Um, the the provost is kind of like the judge, right? The judge in Angelo's stead if I'm not mistaken. That's interesting because the the other context I've seen for provost is also like closer to jailer. And so mm -hmm. like, it's strange to try and find what the power dynamic is here, especially when Angelo is potentially in this place of like power drunk of having been recently promoted and mm -hmm. provost needing to be like, yeah, but I've been with the Duke long enough to know that this is a test, or I've been around long enough to know is that like, what your weaknesses are, Angelo. So, like, there's lots of different ways to play the unspoken history of all these characters. So, I think the Provost is one of the like the most level-headed person in this world. Mm -hmm just like the most pragmatic. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sometimes they're just speaking a completely different language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get kind of a sense of like, I mean, I'll do what you want me to do, but like, let's think real hard before you give me my work order. I agree. And you just have to throw onto that the idea of uh, the provost and Angelo's world is a world of sort of, corporate government government like they're very professional even when the provost is questioning him, he's very professional right so that lucio can live outside the law right and so you have this these two different versions of it i, I yes i love the provost as a level-headed person but they're not um casual whereas lucio would be the guy that puts his feet up on the desk you know and does whatever right Right. Let, let's do this, y'all. Let's re. Um, God, it flies by. What time is it? And we go to nine, right? We go Ten. another. 
Yeah. We've got Sorry. another. We should have another because uh, I'm in Central. No, we have fifty. Yeah. Minutes. yeah. Um, can we just read really slowly? And anyone can stop. Anyone can call hold. Um, don't call hold during someone else's monologue, but um, just stop. This is what I call looking for facts. This is a fact read. So as we go through, if there's things that will help us, I'm not uh, I'm not crazy Stanislavski given circumstances, but I, sometimes the logic is there. Let's see if we can find it as we go through. All right. So I will say this for, before we start. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the facts and logic that would help inform all three of us for this scene is in are in other scenes. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Like, where the hell are you at the beginning of this? Um, so he's hearing a cause and your provost. So the provost has come there. This is how far we've gone. The provost has come in, into the chambers. I picture we're in his chambers, right? Angelo's. Angelo's chambers. The provost has come to, to try to not kill him, right? Okay. He's hearing of a cause. He will come straight. I'll tell him of you. Pray you do. Could you try again? Shut up. <laughs> that was my Siri, Siri, whatever it is. I love Pray that. you do. Keep going. Pray you do. I'll know his pleasure. Maybe he will relent. Alas, he hath but alas, he hath but as offended in a dream. All sex, all ages, smack of this device. And he to die for it? Questions? Is it weird that the provost has come? Like, is it different? Is the provost risking? Is the provost like, that's it. I'm going to go into his chambers. Mm. Yeah, I in, in theory, this is the first time that's ever happened, particularly because this is the first time Angela's been in charge of that mm -hmm. decision. Um, yeah. And so it, I get it's also, it. again, that power dynamic of like, I wonder if it's almost a little beneath the provost to have to ask. Did you think of it as uh, that it is, it is, um, it's risking not necessarily beneath, but it's, 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 it's demanding something he normally wouldn't. Mm. Right. And I get that from his line. I'll know his pleasure. I, that's it. I'm going to find out for sure. And I, part of me thinks he's talking to himself. Uh, he's, he's like bucking himself up. That's it. I'm going to do this. I just have right? that. Yeah. I, I mean, if I were directing it, oh shit, I am. But if I were, um, he would, he would, he would, he'd be nervous. Okay. Not in a like, I'm nervous, but in a, that's it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to find this out. I'm here to ask this question and go. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. What the hell? I'm going to do it. And then look what happens when Angelo enters. Right. Right. Enter Angelo. Uh, now, what's the matter, Provost? Which pause, actually. <laughs> um, it, the idea of like now, comma, feels a little potentially like the Provost has been here a couple times to question a couple things. Yeah. Like now, now what's what? the matter, Provost? Now what? Yeah. It's definitely okay that he's been in there before, right? Um, hold on. And you guys, I don't know if you guys subscribe to the whole shared line thing with Shakespeare. Where are we I, at on that? I try to if it's convenient. If it's convenient. I love it. So right, you see in the first exchange, um, I'll tell him of you, pray you do, I'll know. 
that's one line i'll tell and look it's almost monosyllabic i'll tell him of you pray you do i'll know it's a perfect 10 beats so that he wants that all maybe he wants it all run together i just found a book that says maybe that's all bullshit but it feels better right but then you same thing here uh and he to die for it now what's the matter provost now what the fuck it just comes in to die i'm yeah. not even that good at this game. To die for it. To die for it. Now, what's, what's the No, it's not. It's a weird line. It's not a. It's not a. Um, blank verse line. But would you stress? It is ten, though. It is ten. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, provost? Is it is there eleven? Is it like a? Well, yeah. It, it could be a weak ending with provost. I think it is. Because yeah. you wouldn't say provost. You say no. provost. Provost. So the now really isn't really hit. It's what's the matter? What's up? Which in that case indicates like this is an unusual thing for me to be here. I think a little bit. Or yeah. it's just annoying. <laughs> right? Uh, like my assistant will doesn't she's done a million she's she's asked me a million times what a Google Doc is. And I'm it, it's still annoying. So, um, okay, um, let's keep going. There is a, it, th this line, if we're going to do it as a shared line, begs for an empty uh, beat um, because it is 10, but it is a weak ending. So I could almost take an empty beat on the comma to die for it now. What's the matter, Provost? Uh, unless you want it, unless you want to uncontract the fort and make it to die for it. Now, what's the matter, Provost? The pause after now feels almost like a. Sorry, I've been dealing with a ton of other things. Your turn. What is it? Which is what I thought it was in the beginning, but um, I think this new idea of are you back again? <laughs> yeah, yeah and i like the it I, almost to uncontract it because the it here's here's my reasoning it is an important image all yeah. sex all sex all ages smack of this vice and he to die for it yeah it yeah now what's the matter provost i don't think we want the now now makes it is is, is a um there's a delay. We are such so, nerds. So that's oh, a, no, no. This stuff is good. This is this is what makes it work really well when we're good. nerdy about it. So um, so that's the I am is now what's now what's the matter provost? Yeah, I think so. Is that okay? I, that's what works for me. Great. All right, let's keep going. Is it? Is it your will Claudio shall die tomorrow? I'm so sorry. Uh, ask me that again. Is it your will Claudio shall die tomorrow? Did not I tell thee yea? Hadst thou not order? Why dost thou ask again? Lest I might be too rash. Under your good correction, I have seen when, after execution, judgment hath repented or his doom go to let that be mine okay what does that mean let that be mine what is what is that the judgment yeah that let that mine. be my problem let the let this issue be mine that's not a you problem that's a me problem right. go to let that be mine do you, i see because he follows up with do you your office and give up or give up your place okay okay, okay. uh all right go to Go to, let that be mine. Do you your office or give up your place and you shall be well spared and you shall well be spared. I crave your honor's pardon. Is that a shared line, Stefan? 
and you, uh, shall, and well you shall well be spared. I no. I this is so weird. And this is where I, I didn't look up the folio and all that crap because I thought I have a dramaturg, but now I'm gonna, not today. Uh, these lines are so short. Go to, so do you your office or give up your place as I believe, perfect. Do you your office or give up your place? That's a perfect line. Yep. And what I love about this first half of the scene, y'all, actually almost all the way through the scene, is how careful we're going to have to be with pronouns. And a lot of times in Shakespeare, he does not like you to stress pronouns, right? Correct. Nothing hurts me more than going to see bad Shakespeare, and they're all hitting pronouns. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> but the next line is weird. Count it. Only seven, right? And you shall well be spared. Six. Six. Sorry, I was looking at mine. Yes, I I've been six your months. Your honor's seven. pardon. That's seven. Yeah, it turns into an 11. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Wow. Okay. Do we figure anything out? And you shall well be pardoned is six. I crave your honor is pardon. And you shall well be spared is six. I crave your honor is pardon is seven. So it doesn't really help. But the only thought I had is if I were directing it, I would leave space. Mm -hmm. I, I could literally say, and you should, right? Um, do you your office and or give up your place and you shall well be, be spared. Beat, beat. I would have Angelo go back to working or something like, and then the provost chooses mm -hmm. not to go, right? And, or you could put the beat, extra beats. Yeah, you put the extra beats after spared. And mm -hmm. then the provost goes, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I crave, your, I crave your, your, your honor's pardon. And then idea, light bulb beat. Mm -hmm. for what shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet. So I think you have room in there mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm so, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, where do you guys want to take it from? Uh, Rachel, what do you want to take them? Do, do, do. Um, do, do, do. I think if you want to just dismiss me again from go to let that be mine and we'll keep going and I'll incorporate those beats. Go to let that be mine. Do you your office or give up your place and you shall well be spared. I crave your honor's pardon. What shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet? She's very near her hour. Dispose of her to some more fitter place, and that with speed. Here's the sister of the man condemned. Desires access to you. Good hold. Yeah, that's going to work, isn't it? And you are allowed. And you could take. You could take a beat before what shall be done, sir. Mm -hmm. You could have an idea. You don't. I don't mind a little zoom acting. Yeah, it's almost there. like. <laughs> yeah, because it's almost like if we were in physical space, it would be a like. All right, I will leave. I'm going now, but we finished the conversation. Okay, but one more thought. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. <clears throat> Dispose of her to some more fitter place, and that was speed. And that was speed? I don't know if there's anything in there. Um, you know, like Paul, I've hurry up and do it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Any ideas? Um, I thought it was before she gets too far along. Great. Before, before the baby comes. Yeah. Let's not yeah. have this baby born here or in the prison, wherever she is. 
great. And I love that it's, it's also a, um, a conversation ender. It's like, do it and do it quickly. Yeah. Like we're done talking. And potential question for dramaturg um, mm -hmm. is Juliet as in as much trouble as Claudio is? No. No. Chicks get away with everything. She's <laughs> in trouble though. Yeah. yeah. But she's not she's not sentenced to die. Yeah. yeah. And groaning right is pregnant. It literally means both. She's literally probably in labor and also groaning under the weight. Uh, she very near her hour, dispose of her to some fitter place, and that was speed. Here is a sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. Half key, a sister? Hi. My good oh, lord. I'm sorry. Did I know she was coming? I think I did, right? No. I I I don't think you did. No. Or he wouldn't have these questions. I I'll I'll Have look it up, but but I mean what I mean is did I know that anyone was coming on his behalf? No, right? No. Okay. Which is Almost the first introduction of Angela, uh, not Angela, uh, Claudio is like an actual person who has a sister and consequences when he's not here. Yeah. And I love that Shakespeare has had the provost come in and ask for mercy already and Angelo dismiss him summarily. And now here comes his sister to ask again. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Working on the scenes of this play is amazing. Yeah, it Trying to get the whole play it. to work is a beating. Yep. I'm a good lord. From there? Okay. Sure. Um, I'm my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, if not already. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to be an, an uber nerd right now. Why do I ask if he has a sister? Please don't tell me it's because I'm a pervert. Oh, no. Uh, good. Why, why do I ask that question? Have he a sister? Well, may, how would I know that? If, I, if he had a sister, I've never met the guy. What, right. That's a weird question. Um, Does it humanize him in a way that's disconcerting? Like Claudio, you just thought was a rake. And for him to have a sister, it's like, mm, that's inconvenient. I don't know. That's just my first thought. I wonder, desires access to you, has he a sister? I wonder if it's, if it's funny. Like, if it's... Really? Be, if this is his sister? Really? Well, also, one more thing, because you've just had the provost pull you out and argue with you, right? And you're like, are we done? We're done. Great. Okay, now here's a new problem. What do we do, Juliet? I don't know. Get rid of her. And 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 do it quickly. Great. Here comes a sister. It's almost a rule of threes. Um, exas it's he's exasperated, right? Okay, great. Okay. Now the family is showing up, okay. which is why I think the provost goes, oh yeah, and by the way gonna be a nun asshole so i dare you not to admit her okay that makes sense i, I think so i love how often the provost is like cool i asked my question i tried oh wait i can ask that question cool i tried <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. yeah i can ask that one too <laughs> yeah and you you talk more than you need I, i'm a good a very virtuous maid and to be shortly of a sisterhood if not already yeah which, sorry, the double meaning mm -hmm. in that is like she's soon to be a nun or she's soon to no longer be a sister? Soon to be a nun. Ooh. Okay. But there is a double meaning in there, though. There is a big old, and to be shortly of a, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, like not much longer, actually. Right. Right. It's, mm -hmm. Do you think Shakespeare would, he like, can you see him writing that line and going, Lucio could have given that line? Shit. Mm -hmm. I gotta give it to the provost. 
<laughs> I can see him writing that line and going, damn, I'm good. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> He's so good. He's such an asshole. He was, uh, he was the Eminem of his day. Absolutely. <laughs> if not, and to be sure, live a sisterhood. If not already. For now, Provost, I think you just play it as informative, mm -hmm. but also as a you're fucked, dude. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Will letter be admitted? Okay. Um, well, let her be admitted. Well, let her be admitted. See you, the fornicatress, be removed. Let her have needful but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Okay, now why didn't I just tell? I just told the provost to take care of that. Why am I telling the servant that? Wait, I'm, I'm talking to provost. The You're talking to provost. Just, servant just exited. So I'm telling him again. Okay, I got it. Can we go back? Yep. How, where well, do you want to go from? From from let her be admitted. Thank you, sir. Well, let her be admitted. See you, the fornicatress, be removed. Let her have needful but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Save your honor. Uh, stay, Good. Uh, yeah. Damn it. I just. Sorry, I just lost my place. I'm sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say, Stefan? No, I love it. <clears throat> He's also strangely... Uh, earlier, he just said... She says, what should I do with the pregnant girl? And, and you say what? You say... Get rid of her. Take okay. her to some yeah. place that's a better place for her to be. Yeah. And now you say, even though you call her fornicatress, you say there you have needful but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. There's a part of me that thinks he's softened. Annoyed? I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it, but early he's like, I don't know, just take her, take Take her somewhere. And now he's like, look, take her to a decent hotel, not a fancy one, but a decent one, and we'll pay for it. We good? I, I wonder if it also makes, um, for the audience, Angela seem less of an asshole. The, the other option is, I don't know if this is the right one, but there's another option is he was always that uh, empathetic and considerate, but we just didn't see it because he was such a rule follower. No question. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm hoping we end up in this in this this world. Um, he discovers his humanity, maybe not that much in this scene, although he does have a very long monologue about his own humanity. Uh, but this is I think you're absolutely correct. All right, Lucio, Isabella, come on. Stay a little while. You're welcome. What's your will? I'm a woeful suitor to your honor. Please, but your honor, hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead, but that I must. For which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Heaven, Heaven, give, thee. Sorry. Heaven give thee moving graces. Uh, help me out here, Stefan. I know that she is Claudio's sister. Yes. Here is the sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. So I understand well, what's your suit? Because maybe I'm not, uh, how could I not know why she's here? I must know why. Oh, you know why. You know why. So well, what's your suit must, it, what, what is that then if I know why she's here? It's, no, no, it's, it's, you will discover this in your professordom. 
when they you you have to make them say the words and you have to kind of like like we want to come talk to you about directing a play after hours great they come in what did you guys want to see me about you like you he, he just goes formal right he knows what it's about but he makes her say it okay i'm not going to assume what's your suit what do you want it's a way of controlling the room it's about not speaking first uh i i have a side gig we all have them where i coach public speaking and i do a lot of uh lawyers and depositions and watching man watching lawyers prep people for depositions like say not one extra word this the last one i did the guy's like introduce yourself i'm bob smith and i'm chairman of this pharmaceutical company he said hold stop let them ask that question you say i'm bob smith and what is you, what is you, what is your job mr smith i am the ceo of the like it's that lawyer legal thing that he's doing to her and he's controlling the room. Okay, that's easy. That makes sense. Thank you. No worries. Uh, let's go. Actually, I want to go up to Lucio's first line. Okay. Uh, so how about just from condemn the fault and not the actor of it? Okay. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. Why every fault's condemned, dare it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Just but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Or so, to him again, entreat him. Kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. Who him, I say? Good hold. Man, some of this, these I am's are a pain. But we'll, we'll play with it. Uh, okay, okay. Anything in here from her entrance? So, hello, welcome to the play. Uh, Isabella, who is she when she enters, right? M meek and mild and like, oh, powerful man, du -du 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 -du. you know, like, you know, yeah, I mean, that first line, I'm a woeful suitor to your honor, please, but your honor, hear me, like, I've been saying honor twice, not, you know, <laughs> du -du -du -du. not quite, you know, but... I think yes. she's is can you also she's allowed to be annoyed that she's doing this because look at her next line unpack the next line for me well what's your suit there is a vice that most i do abhor and most desire should meet so so like i i hate what he's done you know and and i you know and i think you know most people in their moral whatever would say that it does you know, meet the blow of justice. Uh, for usually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight for this, but I have to, right? For which I must, yeah. And there's, yeah, this weird like for that I, but that I must, for which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. So it's that. Is it that thing? And this might be one of. Is it that thing of like, hey, 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 we, we all know this is an unpleasant situation, but we got to see the, you know what I mean? Like, is there a little bit of that? <laughs> I mean, no. in, in the nun world. <laughs> in the nun world. And this is one of the things. So talk about status a lot, guys. I, I use status. I, like it's, it's like I have one trick, which is Keith Johnstone's book, Impro. You know that book, anyone? Oh, I, it's a gift. I have a gift for you. Um, I buy him whenever I see him. Uh, Keith Johnstone is the founder of Modern Improv. He wrote a book called I M P R O, Impro. And he's a Brit. He started teaching acting at the Royal Court and couldn't get the British actors to talk to each other. He was like, why are they sucking? And he realized that they had to re be reminded what status was. And so you have to learn how to just put your status slightly above another person. And he learned to speak in status. 
And so I train all my young actors in status. And it's a good way to negotiate very difficult scenes by just having a series of status shifts. Mm. And you could see that, right? And it's a good way to really, you could tell young actors like, well, okay. Um, it's really funny when someone of low status acts high status and they know it, right? It's when the fool sits on the throne. It's like, look at me, ha ha ha, right? So playing with status is fun. And I, I, I think it's very important that Isabella has a very high status. She's not working class. Mm -hmm. She is, this is why she can talk to Angelo that way. And her, her logic, she hates being, she's not a body character. She's a head character. She discovers her body, maybe, by the end of the scene. So when she comes in, it's not casual. It's, it's annoyed, kind of. Like, I cannot believe I have to do this. Mm. And he looks right at her, and she's like, okay, I don't like people who eat meat, and yet I'm the one who has to go to the farm and save the farmer who kills meat. Right? It's almost like you're asking Angelo for sympathy. But not in a pleading way, but in a, can you fucking believe I have to do this? Okay. Ah! Mm, mm. That's who she is. And, and that connects with the first time we see her, right? I would like more rules, please. And Angelo can, yeah. Remember, Angelo's status, the Duke's a 10, right? Because the deuce of 10. Angelo got stat had his status raised and he really enjoyed it. We have another example in Shakespeare of having someone having their status raised and enjoying it, Malvolio, right? It's the same idea. Is but in a, in a very different genre, different world, but that idea, Angelo's been raised, and I think Angela really likes, especially in this very opening. She comes in. Remember, the provost is barely giving you status. <laughs> um Angelo, right? He's questioning a little bit. And now here comes, but here comes a nun who's like, very sorry, your honor, your honor, your honorness. I just, I have to ask you this. I'm really sorry. And he's like, shut it down. She goes, great, I'm done. I think you guys are both kind of happy that each of you can play status where you want it to be. Is that track? Yeah. So why don't you, well, enter again for me. No, no, I'm not going to do that to you. That's bullshit. That's sort of bad directing. Let me go on a monologue and then say to an actor, okay, pull that off. Just put that <laughs> in your pipe, smoke it tonight, and we'll come We'll come look at it later, all right? Cool. Let's move. There are any thoughts on what I just said, and we'll move on. Sorry, one more. Um, in this vein of who has already bothered Angelo about this before, Provost potentially has asked once or twice. This is Isabella's first time um, imploring. Has Lucio tried on his own? I'd have to go back and read the play if I wanted like textual. Textual, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent question. But excellent question. And probably the most effective way is to say kind of yeah. Cool. Because it'll, it'll make Angela more annoyed. Right. All righty. Uh, save your honor. No, 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 no. How about from Lucio, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, can we just go to, to condemn the fault and not the actor of it? Okay. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. Why every fault's condemned, there it'd be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults who's fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Just, but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Not or so. To him again, entreat him. Kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But K, 
can you, if you would? Look what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. Well, I, I don't know that question at all. Okay. Might you do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched. Oh, touched with remorse being compassion. Uh-huh. You got quite remorse in the way. I understand it. Compassion. Well, let, let's unpack this because it gets really powerful. Let's get, let's, first, is, is any of this shared? Um, must he needs die, may den no remedy. remedy. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're allowed to take a beat, Isabella. Take Lucio's beat. You could not with more tame a tongue desire it. To him, I say. And I would have... Angelo does. Angelo says we're done. Angelo, you would go back to your work at your desk. So focus. You're like, all right, we're good. Great. So that then I can send some focus over to the two of you, mm -hmm. Lucio and Isabella. And Isabella, you can have a thinking beat mm -hmm. before light before before must he mm -hmm. must he needs die or must he needs die whatever it is i don't give a shit um in that case but you can have a beat before must he needs die made no remedy and those are those are one idea does he have to die there is no remedy boom mm -hmm. cool yep okay uh i will not do it but if you can you if you would avoid it look what i will not do that i cannot do that's just like so a many... total tennis match it is boom, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you guys, I don't know. So I was just in Italy. Uh, I've, a faculty member who is a Shakespearean uh, talked about the education Shakespeare got. And the students, they, they were taught something like Shakespeare knew something like 200 figures of speech, like rhetorical devices, like metonymy and epizuxis. I don't know what any of these mean. But this is what we're about to get into. We're about to get into this fireworks that are tightly woven. And it's almost sexy by the end, how much these two connect as they go together. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Verbal death match. I will not do it, but can you do it if you would? And then do you have a question on that next line? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as minus to him. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it ends in a question. Um, oh, crap. What? What might you do? Look, what I will not do. Look, if I'm not going to do it, I can't do it. But might you do it? Listen to that words. Will not, cannot, might. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. do it. And do the world no... But might you do it and do the world no wrong? The question starts there. But it doesn't have to end as a question. If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. It's almost like the question mark should be before the if. Right? But might you do it? You know, I won't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, but if you do it, you might not do the world harm. And if and, it's almost like the if should be an and. Mm -hmm. And if you do it, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is him with, with the same, you, you feel the same way I do about him. The same. You'd be human. Maybe. Yep. Okay. Yeah, two things. I will talk until you say, yeah, yep, or not. I'm not kidding. This is my, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't need to hear myself talk, but I will fucking talk forever until you go, <laughs> got it. And then I'll move on. Okay. I was, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, yep. Great. Moving on. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, as, <laughs> um, as mine is to him, he's sentenced tis too late. Is that one line, Paul? Um, as mine is to him. I, I read it as such, but I didn't count it. As mine is to him, he's sentenced tis to, no, it's 11. I, I'll take 11, though. If you make sentenced, as mine is to him, he's sentenced oh, to too late. So, yeah, in, uh, the, in the Arden, it's contracted. So, oh, well, it is? Also, also yeah. 
is to him could be one foot. I forget if that's a trophy yes. or the other one. As mine is to him, he's sentenced tis too late. I love that. And besides, it fits with everything those two do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's the end of the beat. Who are the Shakespeare nerds here, Charlotte? Is that a trochee when it's um, unstressed, unstressed, stress? Is that trochee or is that the spondy? Spondy. Mm -hmm. So trochee is stress, just unstressed, unstressed? The, uh, only two beats. So trochee would be stressed, unstressed. Oh, I'm thinking if it of were... anapest and what's the other one? Yes. What's the other one? Dactylic. What? Dactylic. Maybe Dactyl, a dactyl anapest and an anapest. Yes. And the way to remember them is that an anapest is a dactyl. The word anapest is a dactyl. Anapest. Anapest. Good lord. Good lord. I'm <laughs> an Aquarius. <laughs> I'm just gonna call. I'm just gonna like with. Huh. Those I'm like talking about don't. dinosaurs. You're talking. I'm about always amazed. <laughs> Love it. Um, he sends to too late. Boom. Okay, we've got. Oh, we got twelve minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. You are too cold. You are too cold. Too late. Why no? I that do speak a word may call it back again. Now, okay, so we got the back in the in the little doobly doops here. And in the Arden, it's go it's not there. And I know this is a, some debate in the footnotes. And I have a dash after that again. And then well, comma, believe this in the Arden. I like the fact that there's no comma here in the Folger, but this question of the back. As in, do we need back or not? Yeah, like it's 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 definitely up for a debate in different versions. May call it back again. Well, believe this. So that's a perfect. Mm -hmm. May call. Hold on. And then you scan it first. May call it back again. Believe. Ugh. Well, believe. See, that makes well believe. Because I like the idea of well not being just a throwaway, but like well believe this. Like this is this is for for oh interesting use of the word well. Yeah, I don't know um, if, in this in this usage without the comma there. That's how I read it. Well, believe this. As in really established. <laughs> yeah, because. It's so we wouldn't like it's so casual American, like, well, yeah, believe I, this, but it, well, believe this, and then well, COVID, believe this. No ceremony yeah. that to great ones longs. So, like, to me, it's like set up the argument, go. No one's arguing with you right now. Don't yell at us. <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> I think you're absolutely correct. <laughs> so, so would you get rid of get, get rid of back? May call it again. Well, believe this. May call it. May call. No, it. I mean no. I'm just. I I like the back because it it it. I, I like the I like the. I say the word and I can pull it back, but it's yep. it seems like it's such a controversy, and I'm just what I'm asking about. They have no lives, and they. By the way, I don't think they ever make much theater. The 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 real pedants and the, the real, <laughs> these guys. <laughs> yeah, they don't make much theater. Like. I've sat around with them and I'm like, it's impossible to act. What you've just said is going on. <laughs> I, I, I do you for your support on Patreon. <laughs> no, I do the Frankenstein method. I'm like, oh, this punctuation serves me from here and this doesn't serve me here. So I'll just Frankenstein it to what I want. <laughs> There's a new book. Uh, it was not so new. Maybe it's five years old. It takes everything we thought was a, a thing and just throws it out by this woman who studied other plays she studied, um, Q scripts and everything. And just so, and, and, and no, there's no real text anyway. There's no definitive text. So we're allowed to do whatever you need. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Um, okay, keep going. 
this is exciting. This is so exciting because normally <laughs> if I were doing this, if I were doing this in a Lort theater, right? If I were doing this, there'll be there'll be three people in my cast of 15 who'd be like this, like as we're doing the table read, and I and I would start to speed up and I'd be nervous. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry to annoy you. Right. And so that we get to do this shit. It's awesome. All right, let's get through this speech because I bet Nathan's gonna come back on and say hello. Right. Um all right, we we're take from top back, too late. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Too late. Why no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well, believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown, nor the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, nor the judge's robe, but become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If he had been as you, and you as he, you would have slipped like him, but he like you would not have been so stern. How, how angry do you think this pray you be gone is, Stefan? Or not? I would, what I would say is this. Because it's a shared line, right? It's a shared line. So I don't think it's angry. I think it's quick. Um, I think um, right now, where we're at from a Isabella logic point of view, it's she's, her rhythm's fast right now. Because her logic is, um, her logic is uh, um, it's still not all that amazing right good, oh yeah well you've done it and he's mm -hmm. like no get out I'm done so I uh, it's a shared line and I think the rhythm is it, it's picking they're, they're, they're grabbing at each other I don't want to slow it down until later right okay so so then how dismissive do you think it is is it pretty, am I just dismissing her? Because she does make yeah. a good point. She says mercy is the greatest of all things that you could aspire to have. Uh, you are pissed. You're pissed because she's starting to get to you only a little bit in terms of just her logic point of view. I don't think there's any erotic thing yet. And uh, I think you're like, I'm fucking done. We're done, is what you just said. Pray you be gone. Done. Which is why she then... Okay, just looking ahead, right? Because then she gets four lines, right? Oh, yeah, well, fuck you. Oh, yeah, I wish I had your potency, right? Keep reading. I got five minutes. I would to heaven I had your potency. I would to heaven I had your potency, and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. I would tell what twere to be a judge and what a prisoner. I touch him, there's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. That's hilarious. Why, all the souls that were, that were forfeit once, and he that might the vantage best have took, found out the remedy. How would you be if he which is the top of judgment should but judge you as you are? Oh. Think on that, and mercy then will breathe within your lips like man new made. Be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Good hold, because you guys are getting on a good run. I just wanted to point out that Angelo gets also two lines, right? He had been just little line, little line, little line, and that, and that your brother's a four for the law and you but waste your words. He's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah. And that she's able to then complete his word with alas, alas. And you're off to the races. Um, Paul, you asked how, right, how angry at one point is, I would say is also, depends on how pissed off you know charlotte makes you like <laughs> to be honest in real I, life I, in real life in real life like but i really do i i don't want to plan the scene too much because you are allowed 
you're allowed to just breathe in what she gives you and throw it right back at her. That's that's the beauty of this if we keep it alive each time. Um, but I think I think your question I get your question for real. That's why I didn't go there. But as a, a thing to everybody, I don't plan a damn thing. It ends up someplace on the day. Yeah. All right, my loves. It's 857. And I think that's a good stopping point. He's back. Great work. Great work. I loved listening to everything. I promise I was actually listening to everything. Um, uh, oh, you and, were, uh, because you would be pissed if you heard what we said about you, if you were listening. No, um, no. Nathan was looking up Trokey the whole time. He was, I, thought the, of, I, thought about coming, I thought about coming on the God mic because, you know, I don't know if I need a, a, a reputation as a, a, ta a stern taskmaster, uh, you know, uh, uh, harassing Stefan over in Rome, going, where is my scene? How dare you take time off? <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, I, I figured I would just uh, let it play out and it's okay. Um, but uh, no, no, I, I, and, and uh, believe me, I, I, I love nerding out, even just listening to this as much as you guys are. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really fun. And um, so thank you. Thank you for a great first session. I think it was uh, really wonderful. And um, I will just say, uh, my apologies if my notes about the scene weren't too clear. I, you know, you guys can do exactly what you want with the scene. You can start, you know, if you want to start where Angela comes in, if you want to eliminate the provost later, if you want to combine, you can do, there are no rules in terms of how you deal with the characters and, and the dual characters that Rachel's playing or, you know, whatever. So whatever makes sense, whatever aids your exploration of the scene uh, is what you guys can do. So, so that's it. I would, I would ask that you don't tack on another three scenes, but other than that, um, that's, that's fine. Uh, that, that you, you get people in here and they're just like, well, well, let's look at this part of, you know, and they just want to keep doing the play. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good problem to have, but. Um, no, uh, just no, this was, that's cool. There's no more purpose. Well, only, it, oh, come on. I'm too you, you, there, there's, there's a lot to mine with Lucio, but yes, so just, uh, you know, I mean, well, Rachel, as a voiceover actress, you, you may want to play with uh, what, uh, what kind of, what kind of voices those two characters have. So, you know, um, but uh, yeah, any, any other questions for me, any thoughts or anything like that? No? Okay, this great was, work. This was yeah, go ahead, fun. I, that, I was going to say those three words. This was fun. I love nerding out about not just Shakespeare, any play, trying to dig in and figuring out what it all means. I love it. So we'll just keep going like this, you guys. Uh, next week, we'll just keep mining. It will probably take us all of next week to get up to your monologue, Angelo. Uh, and then we'll mine the monologue and then we'll come back and we'll go through it and see if it starts to hold water. And I will, um, I'll just uh, confirm with Philippa that, you know, her schedule works for the rest of the sessions. Great. Uh, if for some reason it doesn't, uh, there are other dramaturgs I know who I'm sure would be happy to, to jump in. So, um, but hopefully fingers crossed because she's, she's great. She's very, um, she's not as, she values the text, but she's very into just kind of the general exploration of things. So uh, that's always nice too, is that it's, it's nice to get different uh, approaches to the material that some people are extremely text-based and that's how they, they start. And other people are, well, uh, a lot of people have uh, a connection with Brendan, and he is extremely questions based and, and, you know, just really kind of explores things that way. So there's lots of ways to get into the material. So, um, but uh, great, great work all. Cool. Thank you. All right, I'm going to run. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. My pleasure.